A soft and gentle breeze blew through the nearby trees, and it created the soothing sound of the leaves dancing in the wind. It was a warm day, but pleasantly warm. Nevertheless, a wild ache gyrated in Lynette's stomach. No matter how beautiful this day was, doom and wrath grew in the shadows and in the spaces between dimensions. All of their hard work and careful cultivation was cracking and splintering. Soon it would all collapse under the weight of Columbia's hate. While Lynette understood that the scope of Titania Tech's aggression spanned countless dimensions, Duenville was her home. She wasn't alone, but with Alfreda, Alvinia, and Nixie seated beneath a pavilion with various picnic tables under it. Perhaps 100 feet away, there was a playground with swings, a jungle gym, and other such things. Duenia giggled loudly as she ran around in silly little circles. I appreciate you all letting me be here for this one. Usually they're at other places. And you know how Duenia is. <laughs> so much energy. Yeah, I don't know where she gets it. I was pretty subdued as a child, and Nixie is all about chilling out. Maybe you both have recessive genes for being super hyper. <laughs> well, then again, she is a little kid, and kids are just like that. I'm sure when she gets a little older, she'll be just like you. I don't care how she grows up, as long as she's happy and healthy. Agreed. There's a small part of me that's relieved I'm no longer an operative, especially because of what's coming. However, I am totally willing to reactivate if you need me to. That won't happen, darling. I'll bear the brunt so you don't have to get involved. Hey now, don't forget us. <laughs> She's right. We're a group, supporting one another through thick, thin, or otherwise. With all of you, as well as the new operatives and arcanists, I know we're going to be more than enough to handle Titania Tech. Still, we have to be more careful, especially if we want to avoid what happened to Gadeen and Visa. Don't worry. I have my gals working on more innovations that will keep our operatives safer. Great. I can't wait to see what you all come up with. Thank you for being such an amazing R&D head. No one else could do what you do. <laughs> oh, you're probably right. But thank you, nonetheless. Oh, there's Dana! And she's with someone! Dana strolled along the sidewalk with a young woman beside her. The newcomer stood about five foot five inches, had really pretty black hair and stunning brown eyes. She was curvy and she had excellent fashion sense. The woman wore a pair of comfortable light brown boots with fur at the tops, a pair of light brown khaki pants, and a burgundy long sleeve sweater. When the young woman saw the group, she paused for only a moment and her eyes sparkled with slight suspicion. Nevertheless, she trailed Dana's steps like a puppy. Alfreda sat up straighter and even Nixie narrowed her eyes slightly. Elvinia, on the other hand, smiled and waved. Well, you're a new face. Hi there, I'm Elvinia. You're Elvinia? Oh my gosh! Wow. You're, um, I was expecting something different. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. They wear these special artifacts that make them appear human. In reality, they're all quite small. Um, or maybe you're all big. <laughs> Dana sat down at one of the tables, and the new girl sat beside her. Ladies, this is Raquel. She's a new Sparkle Guardian. Lynette gasped, and then she grinned widely. Wow, you're one of the new ones? Wow, <laughs> that is so exciting! Uh, uh, hi, I'm Lynette. You've already met Alvinia. And these two are Alfreda and Nixie. Alfreda is our Citadel commander, and Nixie is our former operative, a successful entrepreneur, and she's Alfreda's wife. Suddenly, Duenia was right beside Raquel, appearing out of nowhere. Hi, and I'm Duenia. <laughs> Alfreda and Nixie are my moms. Raquel nearly jumped when a small child rose up from the shadows. 
To her credit, she smiled a little and beamed a warm expression at Duinia. Well, I use a car wash and only use it twice a week. Ooh, Mom, Mama, can I use a car wash on my hair? We'll see. Now, darling, what did we say about getting too close to people? Duinia's exuberance deflated slightly, and she took two big kid steps back away. And we need to respect people's personal bubbles. <sighs> I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. It's nice to meet you, Duinia. Why don't you go back to playing on the playground? We all have to have boring adult talk. Unless you want to sit down and listen to reports and such. Ugh, no way! I'm going to go pretend I'm a dinosaur! Duinia curled her arms up close to her chest, bared her teeth, and made snarling noises as she ran back to the playground. Everyone watched her scamper off. A great warmth danced inside Lynette's stomach, and she let out a happy sigh. You have such a beautiful daughter. Who's the father? Or is there a father? I'll be honest, I don't know how your, um, species works. Our species doesn't have boys. Not like you humans do. Well, not since ancient times, anyway. <laughs> Therefore, we don't have the same, um reproductive process you humans do either yeah whereas you humans have to engage in physical procreation and then have to carry a child for nine months nymphians have a spiritual procreation and we magically create daughters from a brief melding of our souls babies are created three days after a magical ritual wait you're saying all that's needed for your kind to have a baby is for two people to do a ritual no monthly bleeding cramps bloating or pregnancy bodies? Well, it doesn't have to be only two people. On Nymphia, sometimes there are larger groups of people who love one another. Some people have three or four parents. They all engage in the ritual and then poof. It's not recommended to have more than eight parents though. Children start to turn out wrong with that many. Uh, but, but to answer your other questions, no. Nymphians don't have monthly bleeding, bloating, cramps, PMS, and her bodies don't change because of pregnancy. Raquel's mouth formed a straight line under her nose, and she beamed a hard look at Alvinia. Your kind is so lucky. <sighs> and you don't have to deal with men's bullcrap. I want to be a Nymphian now. It's not fair. I will admit, I have a thousand questions about the other stuff you mentioned. Firstly, I'm intrigued about the ritual, and why having three or four parents is fine. But why having eight parents makes kids turn out wrong? Secondly, what happened in ancient times that made your kind evolve out of needing men? Cause, not gonna lie, we need that here. <laughs> I'm sorry to be that Nymphian, but we do have to start the meeting soon, as Alfreda does have some conference calls with some of the board members later. But if you are curious, we could totally talk later. I may be the Citadel Commander, but in reality, Lynette is my boss. She makes sure I'm always on time with my schedule. That's my job! <laughs> Executive Assistant Extraordinaire! So Raquel, you're a new Sparkle Guardian. Which one are you? Do you have pearlescent wings? For just a moment, both Dana and Raquel frowned. Pearlescent wings? No, I'm not the one with wings. I have a scythe. The only other one with wings has purple wings, and they're small and kind of adorable considering how big he is. Wait, so how many new guardians are there? Well, Brickell here is Sparkle Guardian Persephone. Then we also have Sparkle Guardian Hestia, who has a riot shield, and Sparkle Guardian Boreas, who makes icy tornadoes. What about Sparkle Guardian Iris? He attacked one of our field teams and destroyed a harmless artifact. Sparkle Guardian Iris? That's the last one? <gasps> Wait, Iris? Y you mentioned he? We've got another gender bed combination? That's awesome! Wait, so you don't know about this... Iris yet? No, not yet. It's strange. But I was only in person to witness two of the Awakenings. The other two happened when Hestia gained his powers. 
It seems the universe is ensuring that something bad doesn't happen. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a bit. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. So, there are four new Sparkle Guardians, huh? <laughs> Interesting. Lynette peeked over at Elvinia, and she couldn't help but laugh aloud. Her delight spread to the others, Raquel excluded. However, Dana had a wide grin on her face. Uh, please don't scar or scare off my new team, thank you very much. Besides, there isn't any... You know what? Never mind. Never mind? Oh, I'll mind. So you're saying that there is a juicy romantic pairing already? Raquel shifted her gaze over to Dana, and her cheeks blushed a little. While Dana didn't return her attention, a slight shade of crimson also blossomed on her face as well. Wait... <laughs> Are you two? I don't know. Are we? Elvinia, please don't. <laughs> I've already mapped out the first couple of fanfics in my head. <laughs> While fury isn't my preferred genre, I'm not opposed to exploring new domains. And there are the other Sparkle Guardians, too. I have new muses. Yes. How wonderful! I've been waiting for you to write again for so long. <laughs> All jokes aside, there is something serious we need to talk about. We are in a turf war with a competing company, and it will get more serious before it ends. Can we count on you to maintain our peace treaty while we fight the Nymphians from Titania Technologies? I figured that was going on. Listen, I like you all. Like, a bunch. I don't want to have to fight you, but we have to protect the humans of Duenville. This is our home. This is our home too. Don't forget, I have a successful resort. Our kid visits the parks here frequently. In fact, we all have houses here within the city. We have just as much a vested interest in protecting Duinville as you. It's not- Alfreda placed a hand on Nixie's, and Nixie averted her attention for a moment. My beloved wife is right. This is our home, and we'll do everything in our power to defend it. We don't want to fight you either. We also promise not to use unsafe Anam harvesting techniques. So, are you all just going to have battles in the street? How are we to know which Nymphian is a good one and which is a bad one? Once there is actual combat, what will you have us do? For a long moment, no one said anything, and sharp bitterness stabbed within Lynette. Understand that we want to get back to a place of peace with you. So long as you use safe techniques, then we can coexist. But this... This is different. We have to protect the city. Which means, if we accidentally stumble upon you and not the enemy... I understand. You must do what you feel is best. Until this matter is resolved, we will have to consider you... Not an enemy. But someone to avoid as best we can. We're still going to use safe techniques, regardless. We appreciate that. And we promise that if your operatives flee, we won't stop them. But if they're trying to kill us like the enemy Nymphians have been trying to do, there will be no mercy. Understood. Dana, there is something you need to know. The enemy Citadel commander is named Columbia, and she's pretty evil. She's... America's daughter. America's daughter? Yes. And she's trying to kill all of us. As the Sparkle Guardians were involved, she might be trying to get you too. Be careful. I'm sorry, but who is Merica? Um... Merica was the Citadel commander before Alfreda here. She tried to destroy the city to create massive amounts of Anam energy. Anam? You mean soul energy? And why would destroying a city create massive amounts of it? Merica discovered that when a living creature dies, a massive surge of Anam energy is created. Her plans were to harvest the energy at the brink and at the moment of death to get the most potent sources. It was barbaric, and yet, she didn't care. Wait, you mean, like five years ago? And you all saved us? Yeah, it was 
a horrible fight, too. We lost nearly the entire R&D team, with the exception of Alvinia. And I was badly wounded. Poseidon almost died, too. He had his guts ripped out. Zeus went unconscious, and Lynette was stabbed pretty badly. Yeah, I actually killed Merica. Something that I regret to this day. I hate that we had to be placed in that situation. Elvinia placed a hand on Lynette's shoulder and she frowned. Upon instinct, Lynette reached up and placed a hand on Elvinia's. If you didn't, then you would have died. We all would have probably died. I'm sorry that you had to be the one to do it, but I'm glad you did. Raquel leaned over to Dana and she whispered, but Lynette still heard her. Are they? No. Actually, there is another dark facet to the Titania Technologies Nymphians. While I have not confirmed it yet, I'm almost fairly certain I know who the head of their R&D department is. Why do I get the feeling I'm not going to like your answer? Because you won't. You won't know the name. And in fact, most Nymphians don't know her. I do because we went to college together. Her name is Majida. She's an actual and literal embodiment of what you humans call an evil mad scientist. She's going to make artifacts that are super vicious and malevolent. Tell the other Sparkle Guardians to be careful. I will. We're actually meeting with both Hestia and Boreas later. And we'll let them know then. We'll also keep an eye out for Iris. Dana pulled out her phone and then she glanced at it. Oh, we have to go. Oh, is something wrong? Or are, are you meeting with them right now? Another sudden blush covered Dana's cheeks. You don't have to go if you're not feeling it. I will totally understand, one way or the other. No, I want to go. Besides, I need a distraction after finding out what we just did. <clears throat> um, Raquel and I are going to see a movie. Like, on a date? <laughs> Aw. Or a first date? A uh, first one. <laughs> Dana rose up from the table, and so did Raquel seconds later. I still want to keep communication open with you all, and perhaps that will mitigate us clashing. We'll do our best to avoid you, and we'll focus on keeping humans safe. Good luck in your turf war. We hope you win. Yeah. We hope you win. We hope you all stay safe, too. And good luck on your date! Um, thank you. We'll stay in touch. Dana grabbed Raquel's hand with interlacing fingers, and they strolled away. Oh, they got through the second and third barriers? Oh, they're determined. Alali let her fingers dance across the keyboard of her terminal, and she watched as the information flashed on the screen. She wasn't working on any artifact designs, nor was she conducting research. Heck, she wasn't even playing a game or watching an animated feature. Any of those things would have been far more enjoyable than this. This just stabbed into her soul and implanted in her fiery seeds of rage. Alali watched the footage showing the progress of a hacker trying to get into her workstation. Whoever it was, it took them 20 minutes to get through the first barrier she had set up, only 11 minutes to get to the second, and 40 minutes to get through the third. A wide smile creased her face when the hacker made a fatal flaw and tripped her grand trap the screen flashed with chromatic colors, and then it returns to normal. <laughs> yes, that's right. Start exploring around. The mouse moved around ever so slightly, and then a graphic of a black hole appeared on the screen. The screen that the hacker looked at got swallowed up and was replaced by the initial login screen. The mouse remained still, and despite that, Alali knew. From the beginning, you sneaky prick! Alali grinned as the hacker started trying to pierce through the first barrier again. They only persisted for a few more minutes before the hacking stopped. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you, fool! 
She leaned back in her chair and she stared up at the ceiling. Her enjoyment of the situation quickly faded, and then she crossed her arms over her chest. Someone had tried to gain access to her station. The mere prospect of someone trying to rob her of her ideas and violate her inner sanctum nibbled at her. Who could have done it, though? Karina? Absolutely not. There was no way Karina would do something like that to her. She and Karina had a special bond, one that was quickly becoming an important connection to Alali. The longer she thought about the interesting operative, the warmer Alali's innards became. Maybe it was one of the other Arcanists. That was a possibility, but why? As much as she didn't quite care for them, all three of them were quite intelligent in their own right, and they never seemed to outwardly react positively to any of Alali's fantastic artifact designs. Maybe that was a ploy, and they were trying to steal her ideas. But then again, why would they do that? Surely not to pass it to Elvinia as their own. Elvinia would know. Elvinia was also not a possibility. This was quite troubling, and something that needed to be brought to Elvinia's attention. Alali got up from her workstation, locked it, and then left her domain. As she moved, she peeked over at the others. None of them regarded her as they were too engrossed in their own works. Likewise, Elvinia was working on her terminal when Alali stopped in the doorway to her area. Elvinia glanced up and noticed her. Alali, what can I do for you? You usually don't come to me. Alali gave one more nervous look to the others, who were still not regarding her at all, and she moved inside a few steps. Being inside this area, the likelihood of her being overheard was smaller. She only took five steps inside. I have a problem that I need your help in solving. Oh? Like an artifact problem? A personnel problem, I think? Come, sit. As per her mentor's request, Alali sat in front of Elvinia's desk. So, what seems to be the problem? Um, someone tried to hack into my workstation. What? What do you mean? I noticed that several of my security countermeasures were activated, and so I checked my station. I set up my station with 345 barriers to bypass, and, well, someone got through the first three. But I set booby traps to make them think that they have to start over, when in reality, I've looped the barriers to look like one another to wear hackers down. I have the footage on my system if you want to see it. Elvinia flipped her keyboard toward Alali, who put in her password promptly. As soon as Elvinia had access to Alali's terminal, she went to work analyzing. Alali just sat there and watched the master work. I will admit, your cyber defenses are impressive. I have 5,000 barriers protecting mine. <laughs> but really, I like your use of booby traps. I use obscure and terrible puzzles and first-person shooter simulators in my defenses. You added GAMES into your defenses?! Oh, I sure did. <laughs> and when hackers died, they had to start over from the beginning. Of course, the program would then make them play a completely different game or puzzle. And by then, most would just rage quit. It is strange that someone tried to access your work. Do you have any idea who might have done it? Well, honestly, no. I don't think the other Arcanist would even need to hack into my station. I mean, while I am a genius, they're intelligent too, and they never seem to care about my artifacts to steal them. Hmm. And what about Karina? No, Karina would never! Provide me with the reasoning why not. Well, um, <clears throat> Karina and I have this connection. I know her. She loves arcane science, and she and I always have a great time making stuff. I trust her, and I know she would never betray me. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, betray us. I agree. I doubt she's the one who did this. But then, who would have? Let's bring up the security footage. Alali rounded the corner and she peered down at the screen as Alvinia began accessing the security footage for R&D. She fast-forwarded through it, looking for any oddities. The images showed only a single arcanist, Abjeed working in her area over some device. 
Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Hold on. Wait a moment. Alvinia rewound the footage and then played it at a slower pace. It showed the floor of R&D. And again, Abjid was the only person in the area, working over one of her tables. Suddenly, Abjid stopped moving, as if frozen in time. No, oh, I knew it! What happened to her? Did someone put her in a stasis? Or did someone pause the surveillance? Let's see how long this image is frozen. I have a hunch. Alvinia fast-forwarded the footage, and both Alali and Alvinia watched in fascination. It lingered on over an hour, and then suddenly, Abjid was gone. Alvinia started accessing other folders, one only reserved for senior level management. A database program opened up. Okay, the image was frozen at 7.40 p.m., and according to the time clock, it says that Abjid clocked out at 8.15 p.m. The teleporter pad logs indicate that she teleported off Citadel at 8.30 p.m. The surveillance resumes at 9.04 p.m. Hmm. I... I don't think it was Abjid. I'm going to have to run a systems diagnostics to see if the other workstations have been downloaded or accessed at weird times. I doubt the others use anywhere near the level of security protection we do. Do you think we have a traitor in our midst? Lily, my dear, I believe we do.